Hello and great to see you all at another exciting Oxygen XML live experience. My name is Alim Belu and as usual, I will be your host for today's live event, the second installment of the Transforming XML and HTML Documents to PDF using CSS tutorial series. And this, um, this second installment is called Lists, Tables and Images. In the first part of this series, we aimed to teach you a basic understanding of the CSS layout to help you customize your PDF output. Now, we are ready to continue the journey into defining the look and format of your documents. With the help of my colleague Julian Lacour, software developer at Syncrosoft, today you will learn more advanced CSS properties that will enhance your customization toolbox. In just a little bit, uh, Julian will start his uh, presentation, but before, let me give you some uh, useful information about today's webinar. As always, all of our events are being recorded, so today's event makes no difference. After the webinar comes to an end, the recording will be made available on the event page on our site, oxygenxml.com, along with the slides and same samples of uh, Julian's presentation, and also the recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, title Oxygen XML if you want to uh, rewatch it again. Another important aspect is that as we go along, we encourage you to ask us questions by using the questions panel from the GoToWebinar interface. Also, Danka Priwara, senior software developer at uh, Syncrosoft, will assist us by answering your questions in real time. And with this, I end my introduction speech and welcome to the stage, Julian Lecour. Hi, Julian. Hello, Aline. Hello, everyone. Let's start uh, this new webinar about uh, XML and HTML uh, customization. Uh, before we start, I'd like to remind you that uh, this webinar is the second part of the transforming XML and HTML documents to PDF. So uh, this webinar does not contain any uh, topic detail related which is the, the other uh, series of webinar we have. Uh, but uh, all you will see uh, in this webinar can be also used uh, in both uh, DITA and non-DITA and classic XML documents. So uh, before we continue furthermore, uh, a first poll for our uh, attendees, uh, the usual uh, question, what is your uh, CSS level? Because we want to know uh, each time if the, the panel changes and if you learn a little from uh, all the CSS knowledge you find from our webinars or by yourselves. So let's wait a little, so five, ten seconds more. Okay, so it seems that we still have our uh, half attendees that are uh, that use normally a CSS as a basic knowledge, the default CSS syntax, which is great because it's what we will uh, see today. Uh, we will also see some uh, a little more advanced functions, and like one third of you people also know about more advanced. Uh, CSS. Unfortunately, this time we don't have any CSS guru, and a few of you uh, cannot uh, use CSS at all for the moment. But after it will not be the same after this webinar. Uh, the second uh, question I want to ask you today is: uh, If you already used one, uh, what PDF CSS processor you are used to? Okay, it seems that we have quite a huge majority of you uses at this moment oxygen PDF chemistry, and we thank you for that. And few other people use Prince XML and uh, other different PDF processors. But what you will learn today can be used most of it on uh, oxygen pdf chemistry and other processors and a few specific things can be used only in uh, oxygen pdf chemistry but i i will tell you that when we we, we will reach that point 
So now let's move on to the first part of our introduction. So uh, the introduction will deal about uh, pseudo elements, especially the before and after pseudo elements. So for those who didn't know about uh, pseudo elements uh, and especially before and after, they allow you to define uh, children elements for a specific uh, given element. You can use them on uh, multiple types of elements, regardless of if there are inline blocks, table cells, extra, etc. And uh, those uh, pseudo elements allows you to uh, set on them the content property for uh, writing special content before and after uh, elements. So uh, now we will see that uh, Oxygen introduces a specific extension. So this will work only on uh, PDF chemistry which is the before, uh, the multiple before and afters, which in fact work exactly as the classic CSS before and after uh, pseudo classes. The only difference is that uh, when you replace the default values, the default, uh, the default elements by the, those ones, you can create a, a layer of multiple children for the given element. Like this, you can maybe have, for example, a specific title, a specific number using a counter, extra, extra. And uh, the advantage of this method is that you can use uh, multiple uh, numbers, like in the, the example I uh, set below. So you can write, and uh, the element will be ordered having the closest to one closest to the element and the bigger the biggest number will be farthest from the element so if you set one or two you have to be sure that you want the order to be from the element to the outside and not like the natural numbering uh, order Uh, the second part of the introduction will deal with uh, what is called CSS combinators uh, and uh, we will uh, learn here the most common uh, CSS combinators and they are uh, in 90% uh, of the cases the one we use uh, when we are uh, doing our uh, CSS customizations. The first one is the descendant combinator which is a simple space for example, if I want to select uh, all the cells of a tables of a table, sorry, I will say I will write my selector like table space TD, which will select all the TD element, which are the table cells, which are descendant of the table. So this uh, does not use uh, any fixed level of uh, child element, it will take all the descendants. The other uh, most used uh, combinator is the child combinator, which allow you to uh, only filter by the direct child of a given element. So for example, if we are creating a list, which is for example, the unordered list in our example, I want to select only the list items which are direct child of an order list. So if I have multiple levels of elements between them, they will not be selected by this specific selector. Uh, here you will have a, a more detailed example of the first uh, selector I used. So if, for example, I have a table containing rows and cells, if I use the selector table space cell, I want all the cell descendant of my table. So I will obtain in this case, all the four cells. But if I use the same rule, but using the child combinator instead of the space combinator, so the descendant, I will obtain no results because at this moment, 
the raw element is an intermediary element between my table and my cells. So the cells are not direct child of my table. So now let's start and practice uh, what we learn in the introduction. So first of all, we will learn how to define multiple before and after on uh, different elements. So for that, we will use oxygen uh, before and after extension, and we will set some specific content on them and see how this is uh, translated into the final document. So now we will move into oxygen. I will go into uh, my pages and what I want to do, for example, and uh, which is can be really useful if I want to define a multiple level, uh, level of uh, before, is for example in this case. So uh, I want uh, before my uh, second level titles in my uh, example XML, which is the same example I used in my previous uh, webinar. I want to continue uh, customizing it and I want to add some more complete uh, content. So now I want to display in front of the second level title, uh, the uh, I want to make them chapters and I want to be them displayed with their numbers. So I want the chapter, the first, the second one, extra, extra. So for this, I will use, because it's a before, I want to be the display to be chapter number of the chapter and a dot. I will use the numbering three, two, one, because I want to go from outside to my element, title two, which is, for example, this one. And I want just before it having chapter number dot. So for this, I will use the following CSS. And before that, to make sure my uh, counter exists, I will define them in uh, my previous uh, CSS I used in my previous webinar. I were uh, using only the page counter on my document. Now I, I will define uh, other counters, but we will see them uh, during the webinar. So first I will use the chapter counter and I will uh, increment each time its value on each what I call a chapter, which is my uh, second level title. So now that I uncomment this CSS, I can already refresh my uh, example and you will see that each time there is a second level title, you will find the correct numbering and each time the this, the content, which is in fact split in three different parts. And if I want to transform it into PDF to make sure that this content is what I want to, I simply do a new XML to PDF using CSS transformation. I do not need anything else because my CSS style sheet is already attached on my XML document, which is the main one. It's only a, a style sheet containing all my imports. I will show you. So I have it a main uh, CSS, which is uh, imported in my example. And here you will see that it, uh, you will find the pages, uh, titles, paragraph, extra, etc. But we will see each style sheet during this webinar. So if I go back to my PDF, you will see that the result is exactly what I see in my author mode. So each second level title is uh, displayed with a before content, which is the chapter, its number, and a dot. So this res respects the rule I define here. A second thing I can do is, for example, making something a little more complex. I can still use the content. I will write a simple uh, sentence, which is a line break, number of words. And in the second uh, after, I will define a simple um, process that just count the number of words 
using an oxy xpath function uh, you can see that you are not uh, you must not need to use the one two three uh, you can use each number you want the only id is that you need to define different levels so for example here i use 10 and 20 i could use one and two extra so now you will see the difference here again in my document here is the the after i define in each of my uh, paragraphs so here a paragraph and you will see after each of them the line break number of words and the result of the oxyxpath function translated through the content property once again if i trans uh, transform this document into a PDF, I will obtain exactly the same result as what I see in my author mold. Let's now go back to our webinar and uh, try to define a table. So for a CSS, what is exactly a table? In fact, it's a line of different uh, elements containing uh, the display property on them and uh, the tables define a, ser a series of uh, display value properties which are for example the table uh, value table row table cell extra extra uh, here you will find on this link the whole list of the values allowed as the display property for tables and another thing you can do is, for example, using a default HTML document, you can open it in your browser, uh, add an, a table in it, and just simply inspect how the table is made. So as I explained before, you will see that the table element contains the display specific display table. If you add for example a caption you can add for example a table column group uh, the rows are defined like table row and the cells are defined like table cell so if i want to uh, create a table in my xml document like i have here i defined a table using xml but as you can see it doesn't really look like a real table. So for creating a table from it, I will simply do the same as the what the default browser user agent did. I will define for each of my uh, table elements a specific display. So the table will be as in the browser defined as a table my uh, caption will be defined as a table caption the body and the header the footer uh, each row is marked as a table row and each cell is marked as a table cell uh, then i simply add some uh, simple other properties for example some borders uh, some decorations uh, some text alignment and using only these few lines, now if I did a refresh on my element, now you will see that the table really look like a table with its header, uh, rows and cells and footer. You can also uh, define a caption. I also add once again, but only using the default CSS before uh, pseudo element. I did the same as I did in my uh, second level titles. I define a content on the caption, which is the number of the table. So as for the chapter, I define a counter. I increment it on each table. Then I display it using the content property on a before pseudo element. And here is the result. So I have two tables, numbered one and two, with their titles in the caption, having some headers, rows, 
extra extra and once again if i go until the pdf the final pdf i will obtain exactly the same result as the one i see in my document so here is my display <clears throat> next uh, we will continue by uh, defining some lists as for the tables the list uh, uses a specific display property value which is called list item so what is in fact in uh, a list if we go back to our uh, list in HTML and inspect it you will see that in fact the list the container of the list is not defined specifically as list but each of its item is uh, marked as list item and so we will do the same thing uh, for our list in CSS and use the list item properly. So if I go to my lists, I simply um, does not define the default list uh, ordered or unordered as uh, something else because I already have from my previous webinar that all the elements that are not defined as specifically la la as inline, sorry, are defined like block. So my uh, order then another list will already be uh, displayed as block. And I just need to mark my list items as list items. And if I go back in my examples, you will see that now all my lists are marked like lists, so they have a bullet. But uh, you may see that here I wrote ordered list, but this is not an order list. So how I can make the difference if the list is still displayed as a block? How can I do the difference between the unordered list and the, the ordered list? And for this, in fact, we will uh, mark uh, using the child combinator a specific type of list item on each of uh, my lists and I will select a specific bullet using the property called list style type so let's go back to my example so as I said before using the child uh, combinator I will explain to the CSS processor that all the list items which are direct childs of an ordered list should be numbered using the lower alpha uh, list style so they will be uh, they will appear as a b c extra extra and i will uh, do the same for my unordered list and says that each list item direct child of an un unordered list will be marked as a square so why at the beginning it was the uh, bullet like a uh, disk it's simply because it's the default list item type from the css rule so if we you don't set it it will use the disk so now that i set for each list a specific uh, numbering type you will see that now my order list look like an order list so it uses a and b i have uh, I can see which is the first, the second extra uh, item. And the, an order list uses now a square as a bullet. And you may also see that if you, you can combine uh, the different uh, type of list as one of the child of the other, the only thing is that you need only to declare the first one to make the rule match the direct child of each a parent list so here you may see that this the first list is an order list and a list item and by continuing i have an order list then a, an, an ordered list and then list item which is marked now with the square which is exactly what i uh, want like for each of my modification if i uh, transform the document in pdf 
I will obtain exactly the same result as what you see is what you get output. Here is my list. Here are my list, sorry. And then now uh, the following part uh, will show you how to define images and how to customize them. So uh, in this part, we will see that uh, for customizing images, you need to use uh, the CSS attribute selector. So uh, I have an image there. So I have here three images, which are defined like this. So I have an image. I have a source attribute, which is the path to uh, my uh, image. I have for some of them a title, I have for other of them a, a width or a height. And as you will see at the moment, uh, my image is not rendered at all in author mode. So uh, for making it simple, I simply need to create first of all, I need to create uh, the so and to use what uh, is called the uh, attribute selector. So here you will see that in fact, this is the element name. And here I will define uh, by continuing into the selector, the source attribute. So I want here to enter into this selector if the image has a source element, a source attribute. So if this attribute is not set, this part of the CSS will not apply on the specific element, the image element. So as all my images have the uh, source defined, I will uh, use, as for the before and after pseudo elements, I will use the content property and I will use a combination, a combination of content property and attribute function to get the value of the attribute. So now I'm sure that this attribute exists. I will select its value and uh, interpret it as a URL because what I set here is a path. So it's a URL. So I will say that I want uh, my images to be to display using the content the target of this URL. I can also set some uh, different and other properties on it. I can say that the default image resolution is uh, 250 dpi, for example. So it will be for if your image is quite huge, it will reduce it to be uh, contained in only 250 uh, dot per inches. And I can also set the classic uh, properties like the margin. I did the same uh, check for the width and height attributes. So if they are defined into my image element, I will set the width and height uh, properties with their values. And now if I go back to my uh, document, I will say that now I, uh, I have displayed images and uh, uh, all these images are resolved using the properties I gave. So the margin is displayed here, the width and height are used and here the DPI are used as I did not define any width or height in this uh, case. As for the others, tables and um, titles, extra, extra, I did the same as for my tables and did a, a pseudo element using the classic before, I displayed it as a block to make it appear above my images and I set its content to uh, the text image. The counter I defined to into my document, I, I reset them on the root element of my document and for each image contained into my document, the counter will increment one by one. So it will display image, the number of the image, a dot, and if the attribute exists also, I will display the title of the image. So if I do a small refresh, 
you will see that the first image has a title, so it's a numbered image one grapefruit. And the second one does not have a title, so it's only displayed until the title, but the rest of the content of the before is displayed. And the third one uh, has also a title, so it's displayed. Once again, uh, as the processor works like uh, what you see is what you get from the author mode, I will obtain exactly the same result into my PDF document. So let's move on and find the images. Now, now you see that this image, the first one is displayed here and the, two, the next two images are displayed continuously. <laughs> so finally to enter something a little more advanced, this time we will try to uh, define the positioning. So we will try to position some elements differently and we will try to define them precisely, not only one under the other. So uh, for uh, doing that, you first need to uh, define a context and different axes. So uh, for defining the context, you have to use the CSS position property and you have to set its value to one of relative or absolute. And the second uh, thing you need to do is to uh, define uh, the position using the classic axis, top, right, bottom or left, to position the, the element into the context uh, it exists. So to make it a little clearer, I define here two things. So uh, the first thing I define is that on my paragraphs, so here, for each of my paragraphs, I define the position as relative. So in this case, I don't want to move my paragraph into my document, but by doing this, I mark them like a flag that this paragraph is now positioned. So its uh, position is fixed into my document. So it, this means that I can use it as a context to position other elements. And this is exactly what I did in the second part of this CSS by defining as a before element of each paragraph I create a new specific block. I position it uh, using the absolute positioning. And so as it is absolute, it will use the origin point, the same point as the, the paragraph, as, it's the, as it has a fixed position. So the context of this absolute block will be the relative the closest relative, which is its uh, direct parent, which is the paragraph. Once again, as it uh, before, I displayed a, a small text, which is the absolute word ABS. And I use two of the four available axes, only the top and the left, because uh, in most of the case, these are the, the axes you will use to position as uh, the, the original point is from the paragraph. So it will start, if I select a paragraph, it will start the absolute positioning using the zero, zero axis X and Y here. And I will simply go top. So I will say that I want my block to be 18 pixels below the zero. So from the top, I will go back 18 pixels. And from the left, I want 207 pixels. So it will start once again from the Y, 207 from the X, sorry, 207 pixel until it reaches its position, then write the content text. I also set a, a block width 
and some colors to make it a little more uh, visible. So now you will see the result. Here it's my block, 18 pixels top, 207 pixels left, displayed on each uh, paragraph as an absolute block, so its position can be moved if I want to make, for example, 26 pixel, and I simply refresh and you will see that it moves under and under, keeping the zero positioning from uh, the starting point of the paragraph. And uh, once again, as for every uh, modification I did into my document, this will reflect exactly the same into the PDF document, the final PDF document. So I will obtain the same paragraphs having the absolute block position related, uh, related to uh, its original uh, point, its position context. Uh, you will find uh, once again more information on the Mozilla Developer Network and some more complex examples of uh, block positioning. Uh, if you want also to go further on the, on the pseudo elements, uh, once again on the Mozilla Developer Network, you will find a specific topic about before and one uh, on after. For uh, all CSS related properties, I highly recommend uh, the search on this uh, network. You will find there uh, always a definition of each element, pseudo element, pseudo classes, etc. All the values you can set on each property, uh, all the, the examples, you will find some more examples and a compatibility table of the given property if you are using maybe a, a new property. And now another uh, link you can check is the W3School uh, site, which also contain a lot of definition and examples. Especially in our case for the list, you will find also there some uh, advanced example of uh, combined lists. And you can also try here to modify the types, uh, the padding, the margins, extra, extra. And if you have any questions, we are here to answer you. Thank you, Julian. And a big thank you to all the people from our audience that uh, asked questions during uh, your presentation. So Julian, Let's try to um, answer their questions if uh, it's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay, first question. Question, uh, CSS or XSLT, which one should I use or are both the same? Uh, they, which... both, uh, they both uh, go to the same goal, which is customizing uh, documents. The only difference is that uh, XSLT is uh, XML based and uh, works by a series of templates of matching inside the document, where, whereas the CSS use uh, selectors on elements. The main difference is that uh, XSLT is quite uh, huge and maybe uh, more complex for uh, beginners and you can uh, really uh, be lost quite fast into XSLT. But by definition, in our case, which is PDF publishing, they are quite the same, except that CSS is much more easier to use and because it's what is uh, now used on each website, every website has a CSS on it when XSLT needs a more advanced knowledge, a much more advanced knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay, one of our uh, audience members noticed that uh, you are using EM and Pixel as size instructions. So um, his question is, why both instead of uh, just one? Oh, it was just a choice by my... It was a choice when I did the, the webinar. 
maybe the the only bigger difference when you are using one or the other is that uh, em is the relative uh, value so it will be proportional to the rest of the content when pixel will be a more fixed uh, option so sometimes if i want something fixed for example uh, when i did the the absolute positioning i prefer use the pixel to position it uh, in a fixed content but if I want something to be relative because I want my text to be bigger, maybe in the future, or I want it to in different contexts, different page sizes, etc., I will use the EM uh, unit. Um, Julian, are there uh, editors somewhere online that uh, allow you to design to design it as you want and then produce the code for you? At the moment, you can already use uh, on our website. I think I can uh, show you a little. You can go to, uh, we have already uh, something that helps you uh, creating your CSS, which is the Oxygen Styles Basket, which uh, helps you uh, selecting different uh, CSS uh, templates by selecting, for example, for a ordered list, you will find here uh, as I select, for example, in my case, uh, some squares or for ordered list if I want lower alpha and this will automatically generate uh, some CSS uh, content. So, for example, if I want to show you this, I selected two different uh, options and you will see that you will find once again uh, the list style type I defined into my document already selected by the styles basket. The only difference is that uh, Oxygen Styles Basket in, is more data oriented, but the, the way to function is quite the same. The other, the other thing you can do is simply use any HTML uh, online editor and uh, use and try to use some CSS on it as uh, each modification you did on an HTML document. If you transform the document using uh, Oxygen PDF chemistry, you will obtain the same output because the, the scope of uh, Oxygen PDF chemistry is to use the CSS to render something in the sense what you see is what you get. So if you test it on HTML documents, it's quite easier because you can modify them on the browser, then simply transform it into uh, using Oxygen uh, PDF chemistry. Um, These are two options I think you can have. Our uh, audience, uh, thank you for uh, for uh, this uh, um, because uh, they didn't know about the styles basket. Some of them, of course, and uh, can they reach uh, can they reach it from the Oxygen Editor IDE? No, at the moment we don't plan yet to add a direct link, but as it's data specific. You will only we at the moment we will only uh, have it on our website and at one moment we will also uh, make it available for a separate instance for each user to use them uh, directly without using our website. But at the moment, the styles basket is only available from our website. But in a future uh, release, it will be available as a separate product. Oh, perfect. Good news. Um, and another uh, question. In author mode, the disk or bullet does not appear. Uh, do you have any idea why? Uh, normally, in most of the cases, it's not uh, working because you have not set... I think I can reproduce this issue. If I remove the margin on my list, uh, the bullet should disappear here as you may see it's because the the bullet is normally outside by default all the list bullets are displayed outside the the, the content so here you can see here also it's even something uh, 
that uh, the status basket allows you have some uh, bullets and you can set them to be inside or outside the list and by default uh, the bullet is not part of the content sorry it's here so you have your content and the bullet will never be here but you can use there is a css property that can allow you to add it inside the content but by default you have to set any margin or padding uh, before the list to make them available um thank you thank you uh julian uh well i think we went through all of um our audience me members um questions and uh thank you thank you all for uh showing your involvement and also uh thank you for uh joining us to um today's event and of course thank you julian and dan for uh, uh providing us with the answers to our audience's questions um just to remind you that the event is being recorded and you will find the recording along uh, uh, with Julian's sample files and slides on the event page and if you have any co comments or questions regarding uh, this presentation if you still have uh, uh, comments um, regarding um, I don't know uh, what Julian uh, what Julian said or uh, uh, regarding his tips please uh, use the Oxygen Feedback commenting platform found at the bottom of uh, this very same uh, page. It is very, very easy to log in and uh, leave a comment. Well, with this uh, being said, I want uh, to let you all know uh, that for the moment, this is our last webinar for uh, the few weeks to come, but make sure to check our events page and social media to be the first ones to find out about our upcoming live uh, webinars and uh, tutorials like uh, Julian's. So reaching the end again, let me uh, thank Julian for helping us uh, continue our journey into defining the look and format of our uh, documents. Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, thank you for hosting me today once again. Uh, it's my pleasure. And uh, <laughs> also, uh, Dan Capriuara for helping us with the audience's uh, questions in uh, real time through the GoToWebinar uh, interface. Of course, a big thank you to every one of you for joining us uh, again, week by week. And uh, until next time, stay safe and uh, have a nice day or uh, evening. Bye-bye.